They'll be calling you a radical. Want to talk about the big anniversary today of 311. Yeah, it's been two and a half years. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Two and a half years. And the first time in two and a half years we're starting to see some print media that is written, written well. I mean, all of us, myself, Jan, so many of you out here, my small following, my small little army that have been here with me from day one. I want to talk about leukemia. I want to talk about the path of Fukushima on this anniversary. Look, I tried to start my movement, as everybody knows who's watching this, post-ignorance at Washington Square in the winter of 2010, the winter of 2011. I was there, and for some very good reasons, there. Now, there's been a Facebook, our Facebook right here, to the event, which you can go there on the 28th. There's some pre-events, a lot of pre-events. You can go to Andrew's site. Red Button Studio site, Nuts for Art, Lonnie Clark. These people are starting these pre-events, these Fukushima awareness events. Uh, Lonnie Clark up in Eugene, Oregon has got a great one going on with the, the group of activists from the Marshall Islands as the Bikini Bomb did annihilated that entire culture. But I want to talk about this path of Fukushima and why it changed everything. I was with the early group. We were talking about our social movements. We were trying to start them. We knew the country was right. The early occupiers, which wasn't called Occupy then, you know, we were talking, going at it. You know, NYU's right there. There's so much right there, but I want to go and say with the 100th anniversary, again, on 2011, of the girls, the shirtwaist fire, which changed the world because it has come full circle. The exact identical things happen in Bangladesh, the exact same thing. We All those worker rights that were built up via their deaths, we gave them away. And I wanted to start it there. Well, so doing what I'm doing well, just a couple weeks after, I was in Washington Park, Fukushima happened. And that morning there, I went crazy. You know, that video will live in infamy. And I went over and over, and you people that are coming to print media now, to television media, television intentionally, as I term black and yellow journalism, intentionally downplayed it. Not, oh, we're not going to report it. They intentionally just, it exposed. It's just like CNN's going to play Pandora's part. Let them, let them. It's not working this time. Just like giving the Olympics to Tokyo. Let them, let them. This is the propaganda machine. This is right out of the Chernobyl playbook. As... Yeah, and if you don't think the Chernobyl playbook worked, how many Americans know it was the greatest construction project in the history of humanity? 580,000 men entombed. How many people know that it, the, the average age of a human being went from 71 to 52 still to this day? How many people know that it's probably killed over 40 million people? Now, just think about this, these nuclear disasters, as just the wiping out of the landscape itself. Mother Earth. So, the we, we... And all you people say, hey, we want this shirt. And Gene Stone gave me the shirt on that infamous, infamous day, 2-12-13, down in Southern California, as we took on the NRC, and we took these liars on, we exposed the fake union workers, we took them on, and we beat them. A bunch of grassrooters. Now, if you're going to remake, talk to Gene. Go to his Facebook. This is his baby. This was a gift to me. This is going into a museum one day, for real. But my shirt's... I are made in Manhattan. If you're going to make anything, have them made by people that don't exploit labor. You know, there's plenty of great shops still in Italy. There's plenty all over Europe. There's plenty of places in Manhattan. Don't use slaves to make your stuff. My stuff, oh no. Zazzle, you can go to them. They, they're in Manhattan. They use Manhattan garment. They're still a teeny, teeny boutique grassroots garment district there. But as it went along, I was ranting and raving. I was involved with the Occupy thing, as you know, trying to move it forward. And October 13th, for about, it was about two years ago today, I started having a few tickles in my stomach. Boom! I thought I had food poisoning. 
And by the way, I want people to understand, as I climbed up those rocks and mountains and did that footage, and the, I call it the first 9-11, the Mount Meadow Massacre happened on this day, you know, all of those years ago in 1850. And I am the one who turned it the second 9-11. I turned it the second 9-11 the day after the second 9-11. But anyway, I started ranting and raving about, you know, you watch my video, go back, how many people this is going to give leukemia. You know, I taught this subject matter for years. I rant and raved about it for years. You know, I was a derivative arbitrage specialist. I was a finance guy. You know, I was so much more than that. I was a socioeconomist doing a lot of things. I went to the emergency room, and I'll never forget, he says, Kevin, I think you got a, there's an elevated white count. I had to call an ambulance in the middle of the night. It got so intense, I started to puke, and it was bowel movement that was coming out of me, and they panicked. They thought my appendix had ruptured. I never had pain like this, and I'm a tough guy. As Yeah, I've had a broken back and severed tongue as I've fallen, you know, three stories. That's a whole other thing about the exploitation of labor. I want people to understand, if you get sick and you're diagnosed with leukemia, now they tell you clean, that's a horrific, horrific day. They tell you you have cancer, that's a horrific, ugly day. But if they use the word acute, and they say you have acute, let me tell you, oh fuck, are you in for the fucking fight from fucking hell. I have acute, one of the most radical, hardcore forms of leukemia a human can have. I have acute de nouveau OS AML leukemia. The survival rate of what I have is extremely low. And to think people, and, and people, this fight of mine, on this vlog of mine, started out, you know, I'm, as far as Fukushima goes, the morning they're up, going crazy. I mean, how many videos have I done about Fukushima? Nobody listening, nobody watched except our small army, we all know. When I went in the hospital, finally, misdiagnosed by 12 people, I was so... I don't know how I was alive. I was losing seven, six, seven, eight pounds a day. I never had pain like this, ever. Never had pain. I was passing out from the pain. I would pretty well given up. One doctor, fine. I got a miracle and diagnosed. I diagnosed myself. I found a YouTube video from a doctor at Cedar Sinai in New York. 14 views on it, talking about the pathologist went into it wrong. I mean, it was a nightmare. I want people to understand what I went through. When I mean, yeah, I'm doing videos, I don't, peep, there's some videos from my hospital rooms, but those are the days that I'm feeling good enough to even get out. They quarantine you in there. The first thing you do when you go in there, they stand you naked and beam these things all over. And I remember the older guy, he says, Kevin, I've worked here for a long, long time. He says, you're strong through that upper body. So I'm here to tell you, you're going to need every bit of it. Oh, did I? First thing they do is they go into your juggler vein. And they operate and go into your jugular vein and put the central line with three things hanging in. Then they flip you over on your back and they lumbar puncture you. And they squirt chemotherapy into your spine. Sometimes they go into your brain stem. Sometimes they use needles back behind your eyes because that's where it likes to hide. It's an evil, tricky bass. I was so, so sick. The tumors had wrapped around my lower bowel. So I couldn't eat. It was horrible. They thought my bowel was ripped. I went in there. I was, my vitals, they call it a red 10. I was a red 10. I, I really felt like I was on the, well, I know I was on the door, doorstep. So they put you in there, and they quarantine you, and they, you have no other chance. I mean, I hear these people smoke weed, do this. Yeah, on chronic diseases, I'm all for this. You're on death. This is a radical, radical, hardcore evil disease, and it's caused by nuclear fallout. We know that factually. The only cause of AML leukemia is exposure to radiation, nuclear fallout. As Lonnie Clark's logo she uses up there, radiation does not lie. Radiation makes you die. The jet stream, we're all tied together. So I'm in there. They quarantine you. I got lucky. Landed the number one leukemia unit in the world. They're, it's an ICU unit from hell. And I mean from hell. They take your blood every morning at 3 a.m. They hang, I had... 24 things hanging on, 20, no, 26 things hanging on my tree at once. They air you, air us the M squared, M squared, it's the hardest, more hardcore fucking chemo a human being could possibly fucking have. They kill every cell in your fucking body, every fucking cell, right down to the pigment out of your fucking eyes. I say, everybody, my eyes went dull gray like the Great Salt Lake in the springtime. I couldn't get out of bed. I got down to 119 fucking pounds. Can you imagine me at one night? I mean, 
It's horrible. The only people you're in there, your family doesn't eat because they take your neutrophils to zero. They take your platelet count and then you blood transfusion you and keep you alive. They they have what they call rounds. They meet. It's Danish philosophy, medicine. A guy named Fimbo Peterson, he's a genius who saved my life. These incredible, beautiful nurses. You can't eat. I mean, you just puke and puke and puke. Even the light, the light of a television makes you puke. It's so horrific. This went on for months and months and months and months. You, you can't even get out of bed. You're trying to get out of bed. You're trying to walk. and You know, they're giving me depositories. I went weeks without a bowel movement. You know, I think of my bowel because it was malpractice what they did to me early. It filled me full of fluid. You know, I lived on, front. they could only keep me on the bag for so long because your stomach shrivels up. So I lived on boosts, you know. I remember Whitney would stand over time and I drank it, you know, she was so great. And, you know, that was my personal nurse in there and, you know, my PAs. And I mean, well, I'd be slipping in and out of a coma. They'd be tickling my back, tickling. You could hear them praying for me, you know, pep talking me like crazy. Melanie, the PA, pep talking me. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. I mean, I don't think people have any idea. As Dana drained along this log, her brother, she, she allowed us to go into her room and she was dying. We have videos of her, she was dying. It's so heartbreaking. I did a video the day she died and lightning cracked through this window. You know, Carla, I'm the first patient we know of in the United States to have this type without having the bone marrow voluntarily transplant. There was two of us at the same time. The, Every medical journal around the country is tracking our cases dramatically. Kevin and Carla, Kevin and Carla, Kevin and Carla. As you know how heartbroken I was in February right after I got home from the songs. Fight as they kicked me out of there. I was extremely sick when I was down there. Joni Ray says, I kept you up all night remixing those videos. It was so important. She's got to be the one to kill Kevin Blanche. Carla passed. It was fucking horrible. She had the same thing as me. She'd run a 5K in her breast. She had a good pathologist. Leukemia can present tumors, and when it does, it's freaking horrific. My lifeline best friend, one of my best friends, Paul, who we grew up together, looked alike, act like, same thing. Got it in his stomach, got into the right side of his stomach. And he thought he had it beat. He and I were rehabbing along this log the whole time together. He passed the day after Carla. It was horrible. This disease is fucking horrible. When I was in there, like I said, they spin your blood, you know, the pain, they have a chart in there and it says pain levels, one, two, because that's constantly all they're asking today, what's the pain level, but then there's, it goes one to ten, then up above ten it says leukemia pain. Oh, new world. It's extreme, I'm a tough guy, I'm a tough guy and I'm here to tell you the pain was overwhelming, beyond overwhelming. And morphine doesn't even touch it, nothing touches it. You know, I got it wrapped around my stomach. And I kept doing these videos. So many of these videos and telling the tell Fukushima I did in extremely critical condition. You know, a lot of doctors disagreeing with me, you know, the team, they meet, you know, and they argue. I have seven doctors, I have twelve PAs, I have a whole group of nurses. When they meet around, the nurses don't even outright the doctor. Doctors have just as much say as him. And they get it right. Yet so many still pass in there. It's a horrific, evil fucking battle. My movement post ignorance was about social equality, about tariffs, about usury laws, Hamiltonian idealism, the things that made this America so powerful, and it still is, but 311 trumped everything. I've always been a hardcore environmentalist. As we've been tagged, the soft tree hugger, oh fuck, I ain't soft. Trust me, I am not fucking soft. As I say, you think I was born with these scars across my face? It took years living in this violent place. This is a rough fucking town that I live in, a rough fucking beautiful, incredible, rich, fucking amazing place it was. As GM goes, America goes. Well, we know where GM went. America's fucking been wiped out via simple fucking logical philosophical tools that we use. And you want to talk hyperbole, you want to get all in this spin, you don't want to talk about those basic fundamental things that work. How do you freaking buy goods, even in the nice shops in Manhattan, how do you buy goods that you have blood on your body? The shirtwaist girl fires are happening in Bangladesh right now. They're American fact. They're, they're the same thing as 1911. The shirtwaist girl they get. But here's the difference is we become this reactionary society. When we reacted after those people jumped to their death at 9-11, which is just feet away from 
1911, as then we get 311, as I went to the hospital, 11, 11, 11, 3 11s. In 1911, we had a social conscious and we reacted in a healthy way. Those girls that were marching, we did, because we had morale and we had spiritual leaders who understood logic and understood righteousness in a real way, which we've always had in this country. We've always had those people, the Harriet Beecher Stowe's, the Martin Luther King's, we always had them, the John Kennedy's. We always had those people. Not now. You guys get all venomous and go out and astroturf out and get fooled and you don't fight in a righteous way. When the people jumped to the death of 9-11, we, we, everybody knows what we did. We're going to trace the money. I was a derivative trader at the time. T plus one. We knew where the money went. Too big to jail. We know where the money went. And you still don't freaking care. We reacted in a positive way after 1911, the shirtwaist fire. And we created all these rights and stripped away the power from these evil fucking bastards that had them locked in there. Gave us minimum wage, gave us weekends, gave us so much, those girls' deaths. What did the deaths of those beautiful people that were murdered on 9-11 give us? The Bush Doctrine, the Cheney Doctrine, which still exists. And by the way, Barack Obama really is Dick Cheney's cousin. They're eighth cousins. My walk at Washington Square is going to be so much more than... It's going to be the wheat, the jet stream. It's going to be Fukushima awareness. As these events on the 14th, Lonnie Clark, radiation does not lie, it makes you die. They can propaganda all they fucking want, the IA. It's not going to work this time because we have the YouTube. And if you can't make it, that's okay. I'll have my camera. My little camera that's done all this heavy lifting. My you know, $159 freaking little Sony. Sony. I don't buy exploited goods from slaves in China. It's immoral. I don't participate in the exploitation, usury, you, usury, I buy here, pay here. It's immoral. I don't participate in banks robbing. I don't participate in Wall Street cheaters. Algorithm. I was a Wall Street guy, but I was an honest Wall Street guy, which there were millions of those guys. We're gone. We got a place just like everything else. I don't participate in any of that. What's that old bumper sticker you say? Hungry? Eat your foreign car. We need tariffs. We need to do business with people like Italy and France and, you know, all Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, all of them, Germany. We need to do business with them. Canada, our brothers, our partners. People who don't cheat and exploit labor. People do it with each other. Now, they're doing it too. The Western Europeans, they wonder why their economy's gone to shit. They're doing it too. Because you sent your jobs to China and Let's take the economic factor out of it. It's immoral. You're immoral. That's what this is about. This is a righteous walk. This is a righteous movement. We don't have no church leader stand up. By the way, Megan Rice is going to be sentenced, I believe, tomorrow. They're going to give her life for a simple anti-nuclear act, peaceful activism. Her and Greg, the three, the two men and her. They're going to, and Michael, this is a sad commentary on America. Stay with me. Stay untuned. We can do this. All great movements were started with a very few people. Stay untuned.